Welcome back, Terrestrials. In this episode, we're talking trimmers. I know, we're finally getting to trimmers. It's been a long time coming. It's a cinematic joy. It's a mm -hmm. gift. It's a gift from, you know... Kevin the, Bacon. The universe and Kevin Bacon. Um, so, let's hop into it. 1990... Right. The video store totals are as followed. Uh, director Ron Underwood budget was like six to ten million. I couldn't find an exact number. Right. Um, the box office was sixteen point seven mil, which is not as good as I thought it would be. I thought this movie would have made like a billion dollars. No, um, I remember when it came out, it was it didn't go far. Yeah, I, I I don't. I was too young. I was four. Right. Five. Um, there's uh nine kills. Surprisingly, that's a lot. Like you don't really realize it, but yeah. Um, when I was thinking back on the movie, I didn't realize there was a whole nine. Uh, yeah. nudity. No, doesn't <laughs> need it. Now this movie doesn't, doesn't need it. it. It's too good. Um, right. so let's hop into it, Jerry. What do you grade this movie? I'm giving it an A. Ooh. That's really close to the proper grade. This is an S. There's no flaws in this movie. No, there is right. no there is no flaws. Right. You know, um, yeah, I would say it is close to that S tier. Um, no physical flaws with movie. OK, right. um, yes, you are correct. I just. You know, really hate Reba happened, McIntyre. <laughs> we we always go and it's like, well, I just want to hold those S movies for you know special occasions and yeah, shit. This and, is you a know, special that occasion. Shit. It's fucking trimmer. You know, so it's but also F it's understandable. A. It's understandable that you give it an A. I'm not going right. to gripe on you because you didn't grow up with this movie. I right. did. I grew up watching this movie like six times a year. Since right. I can remember. It was always on TBS. It was always <laughs> on. It was, I like, I, this is like one of the first movies that I owned. Like, right. It, I just watched this movie repeatedly. Um, so, yeah. I, I, and I did not. I, like, yeah. this was my first viewing of it. Not, yeah, that's like, insane. I knew what, I know what happens. Like, right. I'd seen clips right. and right. I'd know, like, yeah, I know. And it just never, like, crossed my, like, my threshold you know it was just mm -hmm. never there yeah. and like and then then when you brought it up it was like yeah yeah let's do that i know it's got like fucking 100 shitty ass fucking sequels it's the fucking hellraiser yeah. um problem right. you know but i just never I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna watch tur uh, Tremors from fucking start to finish. Never came up, so yeah, this yeah. is the first and time. And look, we all have blind spots in our horror Correct. viewing. Like, there's some ones that you're like, really, you haven't seen this, and I'm like, I just never got around mm -hmm. to it. And just sure. um, so it's completely understandable. But I'm right. glad that you've seen it now because yeah. it is such a great movie. It is such a fun movie, mm -hmm. and it's also if four nineties movies, the cast is kind of stacked. Like you've got Fred Ward, you've got yeah. Kevin Bacon, Kevin you've Bacon. got Reba McIntyre, <laughs> you got the dad from Family Ties, you've got the Mike grandpa, Gross. Yeah, the grandpa, which he stuck with that series to the bitter end. Um, and you got the grandpa from Three Ninjas. Like Egg that's shame. and the little girl from Jurassic Park. So and the mom from Eraserhead. Yeah. I mean, it it's a stacked cast of who's who's late 80s, early 90s movies. Right. Um and yeah, I mean, the movie is just creative. Uh yes. they they decided to go against their original title for the movie called Land Sharks. Um, but uh yeah, I I had the DVD, so I watched all the extras on it. Um uh, yeah, so this was now this was initially going to be called Land Sharks. Jesus, uh, they came but, up with a the correct title finally. Yeah. Freaking okay, when we did arachnophobia, we coined a term called Hallmark Horror. Mm -hmm. This <clears throat> I'm coining a new term called TGIF horror. 
Okay, because when I was watching this, it it became a it became a sitcom. It became our sitcom horror, where I could see every week something's going on in the town. What was that town called? Like Pleasant or something? Perfection. Perfection. Yeah. Perfection. Population fourteen. Fourteen. Right. Exactly. So it's like you know, like I can hear like you know, boom. Whatever happened, you know, <laughs> shit like that, fucking, and then like you know, Kevin Bacon's and what's his face yeah. is you know doing yeah. the shit fucking yeah. show of the cleanup guys in this town, mm-hmm. and then then it's just like you know, like and the graboids are fucking like you know there, and yeah, I could just see it does every have that feel silly fucking moment i would have to say that this is the edgiest version of a hallmark horror i couldn't put it i can't label it tgif i won't put, I would say hallmark i'll right, say more but I, sitcom but even tgif horror doesn't work because tgif was more like family-based shows this they're like cussing and yelling even though in the movie there's like very clearly some shit that's edited I yes. don't know if you watch, but the one yeah, guy goes, Jesus Christ, and Christ is cut out. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, huh? I think then, they they said uh, the F word, <laughs> and they were like, nope, that's his, you get that one yeah, yeah. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, and yeah, shit, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. But yeah, like, uh, I just, I was watching this, and I was like, I think this movie needs a laugh track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean there's definitely some like humor that oh yeah falls flat uh it it it, it it's painful to watch to so look back on like <laughs> i put my credit my critic tinfoil hat on and i was just like wow this is some this is some pretty bad writing the movie is good the writing <laughs> is right. not what's good i mean they get the, point the, the small writing, yes. The big writing, no. Right, the right, big right. writing of this is okay. So perfect. that's and what I think. Right. I think that the big writing did well. Like we get the seismo- seismologist, uh, which sounds terrifying because it sounds like she's going to measure your dick, right? And then you're going to cry because it's small. So like the seismologist is like up there doing research for a study, you know, school or whatever, um, right. some university. Again, these young people being played by 40 olds, they just they just really took the right route and didn't Nickelodeon anybody. Right. Um, and, you know, she's feeling these tremors uh, and, you know. That type of writing, like from how do we get to this? How do we discover these things? How does this all that was just flawlessly pinned down? Yeah, not only the, that, but then you got the problem solving. Right. Like the, every every time they do something, the tremors, they figure it out, so they mm-hmm. problem solve. Right. You have, you know, perfect conflict. So, right. oh, we can do this. Okay, you do that. Mm-hmm. Well, it isn't going to, that's why there's like really good, I'm glad they put four of these things, even though we don't see all four at the same right, time, right. you know, it's just like, okay, the, the pole vaulting thing they did mm-hmm. that worked, that worked great. Yeah. Okay. Didn't work the second time around. <laughs> oh, getting on the roof mm-hmm. that worked. You know, throwing the bomb that worked. Mm-hmm. Does it work the second time? And right. I really like that, that mm-hmm. problem solving to create yeah. a new problem for our characters. Right. You know, yes. So. The evolution of the monster making, forcing our characters to evolve in their plans to stay safe. Right. Um, a quick note, since you mentioned the store, that whole town was built in two months, like from ground up. That's right. not obviously it's not a real place. It's not a real town. That is incredible work. And yeah. that's what I'm talking about when Good I craftsmanship. say, yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I say like movies are missing something mm-hmm. like the effort. They built an entire tiny town for this one 1990 B rated horror comedy and look monster at all the movie. Effort. 
Yeah, look at all the effort they put into it. Look at all mm-hmm. the practical effects of this of right. these monsters. Like that's why this movie's so special. Like that's yeah. why these movie this movie's so great. Right. Like it, you know, you can you can call it, you know, whatever. You can call it a joke of a horror movie, you know. I've heard people be like, "Oh, that movie's stupid." Like, no, this is no, movie so making. Stupid. This is movie making at its finest. This is right. everything hitting on cylinders. Like, yeah, the dialogue inside the store being like, why do you keep asking me these questions? I don't right. know. I'm just, you know, all that stuff, fine, whatever. It's not the greatest. But then again, how do you react when giant worms are trying to attack you? What yeah. conversations do you have? <laughs> yeah, have let's, you had what them? What are we going to call no. it? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that conversation. Um, yeah. And that conversation not only happening, but happening off screen while our other characters are trying to have a real conversation on how to deal with this shit. And our tension goes more towards, yeah, what are they going to call it? It's the flow of of... the camera too. Right. Right. You know, they're like, like the, they're trying to figure out how to stop it, where it came from and stuff, which is another genius thing. They don't explain fucking nothing. Right. And I in the DVD special features, um, since DVDs are dead and most people don't have them, I will tell you that the director said simply put that in sci fi movies there's only four explanations for things. It's radiation, outer space, an experiment, or it's always been there. Right. And any which one they were going to choose, they were going to get backlash from. Right. Somebody was going to be like, well, how could it be from outer space? You know, so it's they were like, above. fuck it. We're not we're not telling you right. where it came from. You, you decide for yourself. And that's great one liner too. I'm yeah. um, choosing outer space. Yeah. For sure. When they're Why on not? the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but but the camera yeah. thing, what I was saying is like, you've got them trying to figure out where it comes from. Mm-hmm. But the camera start and you hear this conversation and the camera starts over here in another conversation of hold still little girl like let's take this picture and yeah. the old man's just hustling that dead worm <laughs> which is fucking cool <laughs> shit like super smart then you pan over to kevin bacon being like ah lousy 15 bucks you know <laughs> that's a man with a plan and then they dive into it you know and the camera just swings like that it's right. just it it's somebody really executing a vision in their head that they were full it was fully thought out right also the fully thought out idea was that before we even know how the tremor hunts with sound Mm -hmm. the beginning of the movie the movie before that has a lot of things that make noise Mm -hmm. the little girl on the pogo the Mm -hmm. uh, ice machine that that old you know refrigerator unit um the guy with the hammer the yeah the um yeah the jackhammer um even like certain small things like when they're uh, around the doctor's house Mm -hmm. um with the generator Mm -hmm. and with them walking around on the boards looking for the doctor and Mm -hmm. you know they're just sound sound Mm -hmm. and then then we find out oh it's it's the sound they're listening to, and right. that's when the movie has to start dealing with those problems of, oh, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that we don't sound. take. Yeah, we take for granted that mm-hmm. make sound, yeah. that make tremor sounds, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of tremor sounds, the noise the tremor makes, I'll give that a little critique. Like, that that noise that or uh, I can't even like imagine it. Cli- it, it clipped out, so I didn't hear it. But uh, uh, I don't really remember a sound from it. So it, it kind of like how Pumpkinhead, you know, every time Pumpkinhead mm. came around, it had that cicada oh, okay. kind of like noise, but it was almost like like how uh, like <laughs> it sounded like the goddamn uh, uh, the refrigerator at Egg Shan's house. <laughs> Uh, his little farm maybe that's shanty town used. you know yeah but i just noticed that because i was just like is that the tv or is there something going on outside and shit no i little... guess i just uh, it was just background noise to me because it was never like because it has no eyes it has no ears necessarily it's going mm-hmm. based on feel 
like it's a very indescript facial structure for this monster. Yeah, the 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 look so, the likeness of this fucking creature is a good design. Right. When they when they designed it, they said they wanted something flower esque. So it opened like a flower and mm-hmm. that's what they got. Which is and then, you know, it's funny is the directors or the writers in the special features continued to talk about how they wanted a flower to open and there to be a mouth inside. Right. Almost to the T describing a Demogorgon from, <laughs> from stranger things. I right. think that, uh, the, the, the sandworm the, from Dune, they said that they specifically stayed away from that idea. They right. did not want the anus like mouth um, <laughs> of the Dune monsters. They didn't uh, say that. They could have had their own popcorn it. bucket and shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, um, yeah. So I didn't notice that sound too much. Right. Um, I just thought it was kind of like ambient noise or sound or something mm-hmm. in, in the in the movie. I didn't I didn't attribute it to the grabbers. So. Right. Um. The 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 film bleh, the filming of this movie though, like of them, like mm-hmm. you have the big fucking puppet the one that doesn't move there's nothing in there right right and then the miniature stuff that's what i loved because there's so much of it like they had to get it out of the ground and have it like and you know everything around it just is a nice miniature Mm -hmm. it it it, like when the greatest scene in this movie my favorite scene the top scene in this movie when mike gross and weba mcintyre (laughs) <laughs> fucking uh that one was uh, on purpose folks yeah they, they're shooting the thing yeah yeah and they're filming them close yeah and then mike gross goes to grab a gun and, and then it, sh- it just pans to that fucking amazing wall of fucking <laughs> firearms <laughs> yeah. it's like holy shit yeah. that's fucking awesome like i love and, that scene yeah. And so we having them shoot at an invisible thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have a reverse shot of the little puppet getting yeah. shot going, ow. Yeah. The only one is there's one of Mike Gross. With the machine gun. And, and it, like, he's like green screened yeah. in yeah. almost. Yeah. And it just looks, it's like, oh, what the fuck? And so then they that puppet away. was actually built into the wall. Oh, um, was it the de- the the yeah? So it they had him. They he wouldn't have fit in the screen, right? So they had to superimpose him really tiny in the screen, <laughs> and, it, and it looks like it because the wall is like massive. He's right. little, and the you know the puppet's big. But yeah, um, as soon as I saw that wall of guns, I was like. Dude, these Trumpers are going to save the day. Like survivalist. I mean, this is yeah. You can call it whatever you want, oh, but yeah, they're Trumpers. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so like that that scene where they band to the wall. It's just like God damn, yeah. dude. <laughs> like that's ridiculous. And you know, Fucking and they're and again, on a list your, somewhere. Oh, absolutely. That's they're they, that's why they live where they live. You know, right? I mean? the, those people clearly have money because them guns ain't cheap, right? They, and if you listen to what Bird is saying when they're leaving the house, and he's like, "Underground bunker, food for three years, for like, Five. yeah, yeah." Uh, this is this is like something that they spent money on. They don't need to be there. They're choosing to be there. The right. rest of these people are there by circumstance, kind of. You get the feel of it, at least, mm-hmm. uh, by how run down the town is. They I mean, built a very nice home up on a mountain overlooking the town, right. like, like rich white people do. <laughs> and and they, you know, they've stockpiled and hoarded everything that they need to survive. Uh, but yeah, I, you know... It's their characters are so entertaining for the movie because obviously they're they're very gung ho. They're proactive, right? Like everybody else is kind of reactive. 
They're like, we're going to drive around, see if we can find something. Hmm. We're going to build bombs while we're on top of this house. Yeah. yeah. Like, I've got the elephant gun. I'm going to blow its face off. Like, you know, they're constantly aggressively attacking this thing as where everybody else is trying to survive it. Right. They're the overreactionary. You know, it's like. Is there overreacting to giant worms trying to kill you? I think that well, there's only proper no, no. proportion. Okay, reaction. so before they know it's giant worms, yeah. okay? Yeah. Because all of that preparation that they've done basically is fucking pointless and useless. As mm-hmm. he says, you know, stockpiled all of this gasoline, you know, a fortified you know, bunker basically. Right. And it was fucked by a uh, underground worm, basically, mm-hmm. you know, this, this giant the one prepper, thing they couldn't plan for. Right. This, you know, it, it's that you can, they are, you can plan and you can plan and you can plan, but in the long run, the Kevin Bacon's of the world are, are better because they're the one that can adapt. Mm-hmm. Where planning is great and, you know, be prepared. That's what they're showing in this story. But Kevin Bacon, you know, hey, man, I'm just fucking, just fucking crazy in this small ass town and shit. But yet he can adapt to his situation. And that's why Kevin Bacon is fucking awesome in this well, movie. Well, yeah, I mean, he's awesome in this movie. I right. think I think it takes a little bit of everybody because, you oh, know, yeah. without oh, the yeah. bomb from the Trumpers, you don't get the first kill or the main, one of the last kills. But, right. um, yeah, I really, so there was like, I wanted this movie to take a completely different direction. I'm going to pull a U. Oh, okay. This is only for the sake of because i thought it was funny in my head when i was watching it right but i wanted bert to give the kid that empty gun and then that kid die and they survive and bert start having a drinking problem because he gave that kid an empty (laughs) gun and the kid was confident and got killed and then like the the whole entire series two three four five six seven is all just loaded but yeah bert's alcoholism getting worse (laughs) and like him playing russian roulette and shit like (laughs) that's the scene that that's the direction i wanted this to oh my god (laughs) but i will say i'm glad because my brain went to planet terror where she gives that little kid a gun and she's like never uh hold the gun but never hold it towards yourself and then she's walking away from the car and the flash goes off in the car and i'm like i wonder if that's gonna happen where he accidentally (laughs) shoots himself yeah like yeah like bert's running with his he big would've. elephant gun yeah. and then all of a sudden he's just sitting there like eh, <laughs> fucking like and then like uh the fucking the blonde headed girl from jurassic park is just sitting there and his brains go all over and shit <laughs> you shouldn't have given him the gun you shouldn't yeah. give him the gun and then she right. stares at green jello jiggling and she gets right. scared uh but yeah it, he would have killed himself because he's fucking stupid that i would i wanted that kid to die you wanted him to die like yeah. i wanted him to die because like he's like first off he keeps fucking around like he runs out with the thing wrapped around his throat and he scares everybody then he throws the basketball at fred ward then right. he won't listen and get on the goddamn roof and i don't know he's in a tool shed he lives in a tool shed and then, no that, um, i thought that was the outhouse <laughs> I he said get on top of the, your house, right? I thought so he, li- I, no, maybe. he lived with the the mom. That's the mom. That's kid. not. I don't think that's. I don't think they were because he's over at the trailer at the beginning where they're doing Is the he? septic tank. Yeah, because they're they're. Oh yeah, the maybe you're right. In the beginning. Or maybe the white guy, the in nondescript white guy. Yeah, was, uh, the dad or something. Either way, All it doesn't that. matter. But yeah. he still wouldn't get on top of the thing. He didn't listen again. Right, you know, like it's just like fuck you, dude. You're dead weight. You're you're the weakest yeah. link. Goodbye. Like like die. right. Everybody had like some kind of thing. But I will say though that his payoff and setup. I mean, his setup and payoff works really well because he's scaring everybody and he's thinking it's a great joke until yeah. you know the 
the boy the girl who cried who, wolf. Yeah, exactly. The too girl long. Who cried wolf. And then that's where they realize the graboids are in town, you know. And that paid off well, you know. Um, I think the best payoff is this is the first movie where something happens in the first scene of the movie and pays off completely at the end. Stampede. Mm-hmm. Stampede paid off yeah. like it was the big payoff in this yeah. movie. I was just thinking Stampede, yeah. Yeah. and it's like okay, yeah, that's how you do something when something happens in the beginning of the movie and you wait till the very end to like, you know, it kicks. You know, yeah, it, they Great. definitely. I wish they could have done it better. Like I wish they could have brought it back around somehow. Like the way he says it, like. I was just thinking Stampede. And then Fred Ward's yeah, like, you son I'm... of a bitch. That's when the and credits he, like go uh, yeah. real fast and like the it's fucking like... commercial for Tide oh, comes God, on and shit. Yeah, Because yeah. this is a sitcom horror. It's not know? a sitcom horror, but I do think that with these types of movies, um, that does bring me to this point. I think with these types of movies like uh, Arachnophobia in this one, and if I had more time to come up with this, there were probably like fifty more yeah, that came that out. They in the were 90s. very consciously making movies that they knew were going to be on TV, right? So they were making it so that it played well with commercials. There was definitive like areas where it could be cut Stops, to put commercials, yeah. um, and you know there were certain things that you know were hokey enough to play on TV and. You know, like this is this is one of those movies that's the perfect introduction to horror for kids. Right. Like this is this Gremlins, like you know, Terrifier. Like these are great movies to introduce little kids. Terrifier. To yeah. yeah. Okay. I just threw that I, in there. Um, I think but, yeah. it was the excess of the eighties mm-hmm. in horror. Oh. Yeah. Like, sure. oh yeah, we're gonna have a million dead bodies and a billion yeah. boobs, and you know, yeah. and this director just wanted a simple monster movie. Mm-hmm. A monster movie that can be shown on television with as little edits as possible, you know, other than editing out like but you, you know, or mm-hmm. the the minute amount of blood, like right. you know, like even if when you little saw, to none. Yeah, well, Egg Shan when he's Egg getting, Shan's got and, a little bit on his yeah, it's got a little you know, but um, uh, yeah, like just these really great monster movies that just work. So yeah. that's yeah. where I think that the sitcom or Hallmark horror came in, where it's like, yeah, we don't need to do like tons of craziness just to have something terrifying, you know. Yeah. And it yeah. works. It yeah. works. I mean, arachnophobia, that's an A or an S. I don't remember what we gave it. You know, this A and an S, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. I think that these movies are just like with this one. This one specifically, I I mean, it's just it's a genius movie. Right. And and, you know. I think it's only because it's as old as it is that I enjoy how lack of gore, blood, and actual yeah. scary things are happening in this movie. Right. Now, maybe right. they could be considered scary to a younger viewer nowadays, but I was never scared by this movie. And I was watching mm. this movie extremely young. So, like, I just, this movie played out more like Predator to me. Right. Like, it right. Played Predator's out more a good action. one. Right. Like, more action there's not really horror to this and you wow. know predator sci-fi horror or sci-fi action but that's how i viewed this it was more sci-fi i didn't find it scary this is i found western it horror yeah it was it was like it was well no not even i see i didn't find anything horror about it i thought and it, was it still has those movie. elements of a monster movie right so. i'm talking about as a child Right. I didn't I didn't have the knowledge of genres that I have sitting here today. Right. As a child, I said this is a monster movie but it's an action monster movie like Predator. Predator. Um it's a sci-fi action movie to me. Uh, mm-hmm. so I never even really considered this a horror movie or a comedy because it wasn't funny. Right. Um so though those titles it never crossed my head until you know, I saw it on IMDb basically. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely I I, I dig. I dig. Yeah. So but oh, Jacob. 
Sorry. Oh, no, Before go ahead. We jump into that. My and I could be wrong, so if anybody knows for sure, please let us know in the comments. This takes place in Arizona. No, New Mexico. I mean Nevada. Right. N Nevada license. That was plates. the problem. Yeah, the Nevada license plate. That was the problem because Bisbee is in Arizona. There's a Bisbee, Nevada. Is there? Yes. Because I know Doug Stanhope lives in Bisbee, Arizona. That's what I was thinking too, and still I start it, and then I had to look it up. So you did. Yeah. You looked it up. All right, cool. All right. right. Well, then fuck me. Let's go ahead. Cool. Uh, <laughs> All right, Jacob. Yeah. Is this a cult classic? Absolutely. This no. is this is the cultiest classic. Yes. No, this is mainstream. This is when this. Yeah, it's so mainstream. People... You missed it for fucking 25, 30, 40 Yeah, years. I know. I'm I I know, uh, but like it, I just know a lot of people like this movie. Like a lot of people, not just a niche yeah, yeah, group yeah. of That's people. True. That's, true. That's true. Like a lot of people like this. This is movie. an iconic movie. Right? This is an iconic movie, not like garbage pale kids. Right, okay, right. right. <laughs> uh, Jacob, you gonna pay money to see this? You gonna see it in the theater if oh, it comes I back around? To. I would. Yeah, love I to. would too. I think it's cinematically. Just to watch that nice. Bert, like superimposed Bert gun scene, right? Again, just, yeah, screen. the fucking that gun, fucking the hilarious. Gun, that gun, yeah, that gun wall, stuff. yeah. Uh, I already know the answer to this question, but would you own physical media? Would you actually go out and buy this? Yeah, in I got physical it on media? VHS and DVD. So, right? What do you got it on? Uh, nothing. I got it on fucking Amazon. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so, um, Jacob. A remake. Let's talk no, remake. No, no, don't stop. Stop. I stop think. Hollywood. I think. Stop. Be, no. I think that would be the dumbest thing to do. No. Why would you do that? Like, this not is to like, take away from anything, and not to over CGI this. That's you what they're going to do. That's the thing. Like in theory, a remake would be awesome because you could redo it and shoot it better and. Kevin Bacon is still the same age somehow, but like <laughs> they're going to over CGI it. They're going to make it woke. They're going to do things that are going to ruin the movie that like the movie was made very specifically. It was done with practical effects. They built an entire town. All that's going to be gone. This is going to be like there's already 19 sequels to this fucking movie and right all of and them i think a good dick. reboot like 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 hellraiser okay how Hell, all those hellraisers after seven number two came out like two years ago three years ago so what? It, of hellraiser no of tremors, oh, tremors. so no, they're still making them you can't reboot while you're still making the original series uh, of course you can't be like uh, reboot know. and then number eight but, like if we just go boom, we're making tremor, you know, and it's uh, just it's like I think they could if they stuck to we're we're staying uh, practical. They're not. Um, going to. We're not. We're not going to show much of the monster unless we have to. You know, that's shit. That's why I think they created the that's little ideal world, man. That's you know, ideal world. You know, Hellraiser, as well as I do, Prey, those none of that's going to happen. It like Prey like was those... full of, let's be let's be clear. Prey was full of CGI. Well, yeah, so, so was, was Hellraiser. It. And, so, it, you know. and it, but those worked. So they but they worked, but it's still a bunch of CGI. Right. The magic of this movie is the giant puppet worm and the hand puppet worms. Right. Like you start CGIing big things like that that are like that would be like them CGIing the predator. Like the right. entire movie. Right. No. Like they CGI <laughs> they didn't CGI no. in, in the first it they didn't CGI a ton of pennywise. But right. in the second one, they did, and you can see a very clear yes. difference. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. You're, they're not going to do it properly. Just like Roadhouse, mm. they're going to go. We're going to take this classic. We're going to change it up enough so that we can use the name. Right. We can use the storyline, but then we're going to change some shit up. Fine. Call it something else. 
Call it land sharks. They can. They got yeah. Call it land sharks. There you go. Like, I don't, gonna... like yeah, but yeah, they're not going to do it properly. Okay. I don't. I think it's a terrible idea. I wouldn't mind seeing it. So, would you recommend this movie, Jacob? It's a matter of time. Yeah, of course. Go watch okay. it. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, a matter of time before they fucking. It. It's a matter of time before they ruin this. Right. Yeah, everything's gonna get remade here eventually or rebooted. Yeah. So, but 